We're going to walk through the entire process of setting up the Node.js on the local computer, the MongoDB, and then hopefully by the end of the class, we will be able to launch and get into the example project. If we don't, then definitely by Thursday, we'll, we'll be there. Today, I'm going to do it on a Windows install. I've, I've got my system set up for dual boot. So you should hopefully benefit everybody that way. Okay. And I can do that all semester, go back and forth with the dual boot and, and show what's, what's going on. This is a clean Windows install. I have not put any of the Calisius, Node.js, or MongoDB on this system. So this should be just like the majority of people in the classes systems, except for, you know, you, you took a stab at it on Thursday. All right. So please, if I start going too fast or something's not clear what I'm doing, please say so, and I will try to account for that and, and go back and fix that problem. Okay, and I, I should point out before going any further, I have added an assignment for that's due next Sunday or this coming Sunday, and that is to grab a screenshot of your hello world up and running on your local system, which is exactly what we're doing. So you're just going to show me you got it working before we go into the next phase where we're going to start. I, I know it's a disappointment, but you, I think you'll recover somehow. Okay. So that is the assignment. I felt like that was, a you know, I've done a lot of consulting work. And one time I went on a consulting work and I assume, made the assumption that everybody knew how to use an editor. Oh boy. And these were supposed to be people that could program. And there were a lot of people that couldn't use an editor. What so Lua, it wasn't, it wasn't the hard stuff, it, but they didn't know what to do to even get started. So from then on, I started doing hello worlds for everything, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Yeah. And so we're going to do that here as well. There's a reason why we consistently in computer science and in DET always do some type of hello world type project. It's to make sure everybody can get everything working. Unity won't start. Well, that kind of does you in, doesn't it? <laughs> so getting a local server up and running on your computer system is a hello world for this project. We've got to get the local server running or you're not going to be able to test anything. Okay, let's get started on that. So um, I'm going to download the Calisius software. I've gone to the Calisius GitHub, which is github.com Calisius forward slash Calisius dash Unity 3D. And the links are there in the, so it's there now, as well as I have, giving you a draft of the multiplayer textbook. So um, that's chapter one, which will cover a lot of what we talked about last week, as well as what we're getting started with today. Uh, yeah, it talks about authoritative versus a listen or non-authoritative and, and a lot of what the discussion was. Um, I'm still writing that. So that, that's generally what I work on on Wednesdays and Fridays is working on writing that. And I've downloaded, did I download Calisius? No, I didn't. Okay, so I'll download the zip. Um, I'm gonna go over here to Node.js, which is nodejs.org forward slash download if you have not already downloaded it. So nodejs.org. Or, or you can just type into Google, no JS download, and it'll take you right there. Uh, so I'm gonna do the Windows install 64 bit. And then I need to also get the MongoDB community server. Now MongoDB is a database program, something like MySQL or NoSQL or Oracle or whatever, it's a database and it installs a database server on your local system. 
Mongo works differently than what MySQL does. It's it's more of like storing JSON files instead of yes. What does MySQL do? MySQL is a traditional database with tables and fields, and basically you have to build it all. <laughs> okay. I don't know. What is a database server? <laughs> yeah, I don't know that. Okay. okay. Let, let's take another step back. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for asking. <laughs> so, what is a database? It's like stores information. I know that. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. That, that, and we have databases, a traditional database, okay. and that would be a SQL database, such as MySQL or NoSQL or uh, SQLite, or there, there's lots of them. Is it just difference in data structure, basically? Basically, that's what it comes down to. When we're talking about a SQL database, and I'm tremendously oversimplifying this. Right. When we're talking about a traditional database system, uh, Microsoft Access would fall under that category as well. If you were to wanted to organize something like that, you would say, I want to create a table of all of my records. And I would have a field called artist and a field called title of album or album title. Uh, maybe a, another field that is the first song or the year that it was published or, or something like that. And I can then write a SQL query, which is stru structured query language. That's what SQL stands for, SQL. I can write a structured query language information to get find, you know, when was uh, Styx Paradise Theater published. So I, I could do a query to find the year that or all give me every album that was published in 1990. And it would list everything in my collection that was published in 1990. So that's what a query does. It returns information. Um, you could have, you know, if you work at Domino's or Little Caesars, they have a huge database on all of the customers. Things like if you're doing deliveries, do they have a dog? <laughs> that, that's important information. Do they tip? That tells you the priority of the delivery. <laughs> Little things like that are included in that database and I could search on that. So that's a database, it holds information. We are using the Mongo database. Mongo database is structured differently than a a uh, SQL based database. It's using JSON files. So basically you have a label and a value. That, that's how it's structured in a Mongo database. It's more flexible than what a traditional SQL database is because I can throw any information in there. Oh, I need to add a field? Just throw it in there. It's okay, it doesn't matter. Mongo's flexible like that. Mongo in this case is primarily used for chat because if you're going to have an online game and you're going to offer chat, you need to be storing the chat. Why? Why is storing chat important? So you can see what they said. So, but why is that important? And, and this gets into legal stuff. Lawsuits, why? Uh, harassment. Harassment or you've got a bunch of terrorists yeah, coming into a room to discuss how they're going to invade whatever government building they're going to. <laughs> yeah. um, how are they going to, what they literally, this, this became a huge priority after 9-11 because terrorists were going into games into a closed off area into a, a room and discussing how to do terrorist attacks. But it's just recommended. It is highly recommended if you are doing some type of multiplayer game to protect your own hind end, record the chats. Because if, if you've got harassment going on, if you got bullying going on, 
or you've got terrorism going on, it, somebody in the legal profession might be asking for your records and they will get a court order. And if you aren't keeping those that, that data, you get in trouble. Whereas if you're, it's like, yeah, here's my database. And give them the, 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 the stick. And it's like, there it is. Do whatever you need to do. Well, I, I, I would say, you know, you generally, again, getting into the legalese of it all, generally, if you're getting a court order to provide information, and you should always require a court order, you, you don't want to just simply willy-nilly give your, your clients data out or their conversations, but if you are, generally, it's going to specify the uh, a range of dates when the chats took place on, uh, maybe a specific user name and so you can narrow it down and not give all of your data that's you know otherwise it's a fishing expedition and and you can say no I'm, this needs to be then attorneys need to get involved and you're not responsible it's not your fault you're not expected as a game developer to go out and say hold on let me do a background check on you first um, okay, anyway, let's let's get back to this. I need to download MongoDB. So hit download. I should have started that while I was talking. But okay, um, while that's downloading, I'm going to go ahead and install the Node.js. Next. Yes, I've read the agreement. Yeah, right. Um, where you want it installed to. Yeah. Next, next, install. Okay, so Node's now installed on my system. Um, sometimes it'll add it to the path, so it'll probably find it. Sometimes it doesn't. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's go ahead and get Mongo installed. Again, next. Yes, I read the terms. No, I didn't. Uh, we're going to go complete install. Run service as a network service user. And where it's going to install to. And next. Next, install. Oh, and it's got a, it looks like it needs to close Node.js and several other services. Well, it'll it says it'll attempt to restart them, so I'm going to let it do that. Still installing. Yes. Yes, we do. So um, while it's doing that, I'm going to go over here to Calisius, and I'm going to have it extract that, and I'm going to have it extract to my desktop and select the desktop folder, extract, and there it is. And I am going to be kind to myself and go in here to my Calisius, and I'm going to rename it. Instead of Calisius-Unity master all this stuff, I'm just going to put Calisius. Because I'm going to be going into that folder very regularly and having to type that in. Okay, it looks like Mongo finished. Nope, still going. <laughs> and I don't think I need to do any of this. Sure. Okay. So what was your question? What did you rename it Calisius? I just renamed it Calisius. It, it was Calisius dash Unity 3D dash master. And since we're going to have to command line into that folder on a very regular basis from here on out, I thought, let's just call it Calisius and make life a little bit easier. We're ready. So we're going to now work on getting everything installed for Node. Now I mentioned this on Thursday. What is the command that we use for activating things with Node.js? Yeah, to, to get things started, to install things. NPM, which stands for? Node something or processing module. <laughs> package manager, package manager. yes. Node package manager, manager, or NPM. By the end of the semester, you're all going to at least be semi-competent in Node.js, I'm not claiming you're going to be an expert because Node.js is a huge thing, learning curve to it, but you're going to be familiar with it. There, there's so much you can do with Node. 
and the reason why Node.js was developed was web pages started being built entirely out of JavaScript. All the social media sites use a form of Node.js to build the responsiveness. All of those sites are using JavaScript to do that. So they needed a server that was more responsive to the JavaScript tool set. On top of that have been built a ton of additional JavaScript-based libraries. React, Angular, gosh, there's hundreds of them and I'm blanking on all of them right now. If you go to the Node.js site, it lists the popular JavaScript packages. Calisius is considered a JavaScript package. It's being built on top of or made available because of there is such a thing as Node.js. Next step, we need to open up a command line. Now, if you're used to using Linux, it's like, sure, no problem. Or you, you've, you've done some work that required uh, command lines in, in GitHub or things like that. No big deal at all. But for the vast majority of you, you're not used to using command lines. Command lines are what the operating system is actually built upon. Every time you click a mouse, every time you drag something or copy a file, it's actually executing a command line behind the scenes. The GUI interface is doing all the work and translating that into code. If you've ever used um, Linux, you're used to this stuff. If you're from the days of DOS, you're used to this stuff. On a Mac, the way you get to the command line is in the search window, type in terminal, and that will launch it. On the PC or Windows, we're going to use PowerShell. PowerShell is a replacement, and all you have to do is type in power, and it should pop up there, Windows PowerShell. PowerShell is the replacement for the old CMD command. CMD was what we used to use. Well, I'll go ahead and bring that up too. If somebody says, oh, just CMD, or bring up a command line, they mean type in CMD and bring up the command prompt. They look a little different on purpose. PowerShell is the new improved command line in Windows. Okay, it, it allows for more capabilities. On PowerShell, I'm gonna increase my font size here. Font, is that a little more readable? I need to go to the desktop. The command to go to the desktop for Mac or Windows is CD for change directory desktop. CD change directory. I'm now in the desktop directory. Depending on whether you are on a Macintosh or a Windows, if you want to see the files that are in that folder, on a Windows, you type in directory, DIR. On a Mac, you type in LS. Okay, so use LS. I'm just gonna use LS for everything then because it works and it's less, and it's less, less confusing going back and forth between the two operating systems. What does LS stand for? Uh, list. list stuff. Yeah, list. There's my folder. There you can see I've got Calisius. My rename Calisius. If you did not rename it, it may say Calisius dash Unity 3D dash master. I renamed it. So I'm going to CD, change directory to Calisius, and there's my folder. Now, this is exactly the same thing as if I just double clicked on it and brought up the GUI. There, there's no difference other than one is command line, the other is GUI. You see, it's got the path laid out, the file and everything. Yes. Yeah, it shows me exactly what directory I'm in, all of that. Okay. If you have installed any of this to a different drive, you know, I know some of you have multiple hard drives on your laptops. All you have to do to go to the different drive is the drive letter and a colon. To begin with, everything's on a C drive. If you've got a secondary drive, it's probably D drive. So D colon will take you to that drive. 
So yeah, you're, you're learning about operating systems at the same time you're working, learning about networking, which is essential knowledge because we're working with command line structures. Okay, very soon, within a couple of weeks, we're going to be working with remote servers. So again, we're going to be using command lines on those remote servers, just like we're using it on our local computer. So in other words, what we're doing today is important. Retain this knowledge, but you're gonna be doing it a lot. So it should hopefully stick if you're not familiar with that. Yes. How do you like build that? Oh, to go back a folder, CD, period, period. And if you want to reissue the same command again, you can up arrow. Little things will make your life so much easier. Okay, so I'm in Calisius. I need to go to the server folder, CD server. Now it's time to get started with NPM. So NPM, install. So NPM, install. It'll download everything. This will take just a few minutes. And what NPM is actually doing, see this uh, package .json file? It's going into the package.json file and see what the dependencies are for this project. Because all Node.js projects build off of other Node.js projects. It's like, oh, they've already done all the program for network communications. I'll just include that. I will require that file. Require. Bring any bells from other programming? Import. <laughs> require import. Same thing, just different words. They import or require the, what's already been created, and they can call upon that and build off of that. So why recreate the wheel when it's already been done? And, the, and that's what it's doing. OK, we're done. And it, it does the obligatory, hey, some of these projects are looking for funding because programmers are hungry. Next step, we've done the npm install. We're in server. The command that it's going to use to get everything going is this index.ts file. TS stands for TypeScript. What is TypeScript? It's, a, it's like a better JavaScript. It's a, a superset of JavaScript. We actually have variable type. Automatically, it's going to go in. It's going to go in and launch the index file. So either index.js or index.ts and it'll look. If you want to see what the index file is, you can open you can take a look at that. So I'm going to go here to server index and I'm going to open it with and I'm using vis, visual studio.code as my editor. I'm just using visual studio code because it's lighter weight. So what's the server for index.ts I just opened that so that we could see what the commands are. Yeah, I haven't done anything beyond that. I just wanted to see what the file said. And you can see the very first thing is import HTTP. Gee, I wonder what that's going to do. Any wild guesses? A website. It's going to do web hosting. Wow. Um, Express is a package for doing um, web pages, basically, communications. And then it starts pulling in Calisius stuff, okay? The port we're going to be doing for communications, okay, I guess I should back up. I'm jumping ahead again. Everybody knows what an IP address is, right? If I give you 250.54.276.32, I have no idea where that would go. So it, it would, there's some computer on campus assigned to that IP address. So if I gave you that IP address, it would communicate with that computer. If I say, gave you all that and said port 80, only a few of you are gonna know what this is. If I said port 80, what did that mean to the computer? Eh, close. <laughs> It, but but what what does port 80 do? <laughs> Email? Uh, okay, I'm just going to say <laughs> <laughs> Port 80 is usually used for web traffic. So if I hit a server saying port 80, it's going to return the web pages off of that. 
Then there's another port if I wanted to connect to it securely, SSH. If I want a secure connection, there's a different port for that. Basically, it's like a mailbox for your house, except the mailbox has thousands of individual mailboxes. So I got a big mailbox that's my IP address. And then let's say, let's say it's a dorm. So you put you tell somebody I'm in the maybe dorm. And so somebody sends an envelope to the maybe dorm, but then you're in room 256. So it needs to go to room 256. That's the port number. That's saying my application, Calisius, is listening on port 2567. That's the only port that it's going to listen to. It doesn't listen to 80. It doesn't listen to 257. It doesn't listen to anything else. It can't get the mail from any other port, only this one. This is a way of adding security to your network because you've all heard of denial of service attacks. Yeah, they're all attacking and usually they're attacking port 80. Well, if my server is running on port 257, it ignores all that other noise. It's only going to pick up the mail or the messages from the port that it's assigned to listen to. Everything else is ignored. So maybe just no, it, training the rule of ground here, but I kind of want to make sure that I'm getting it for myself. So an IP address for all intents and purposes is not too different from just a home address. Exactly. Okay. And this home address, or, or let's take a dorm, right? Yeah, dorm's easier. It, it makes yeah. better equivalency. <laughs> so the ports are just each individual room. Yes. And you're sending uh, an envelope with instruction, right? Right. Now, whichever room this these instruction or information is sent to, only that people, room gets that it. That room or the people in that room or whatever will either get those instructions or follow whatever. Right. Okay. And it ignores all other rooms. Okay. Yes, your IP address changes all the time on your computer system. Every time you change a network, it changes IP addresses. Let's see if we can launch the server. NPM, start. That's it. I got to allow access. Yes, you should allow access. It's running. I get a depreciation warning uh, on, on a thing with the engine. Not a big deal. Other than the depreciation warning, is there any input or indication that it started? Yes. Starting ts-node index.ts. Running on WS or web server localhost. Localhost means so it's running on localhost, which is your local computer. Your local computer has become a host on port 2567. Yes. So like, since we're all on 2567, could I go to that code and change it to find one number? Yes. And like it'd be different in the word? Yes. Okay. As long as you changed it on the client side as well. You have to, you have, to have the same port on the server and the client. 